I'll keep this one short, just the nuts and bolts. The amount of information being generated is staggering. Each time an idea or problem is examined, a bit more information about it is created and stored away somewhere. An annotated bibliography is an organized collection of related sources with descriptive information included. There are many instances of formal annotated bibliographies created for special interest experts, but there are many more created by students like yourselves who have been asked to delve into an ongoing academic discussion. The short answer here is to get a deeper understanding about a topic or issue. It's far too easy to do a Google search, take the top five hits, and tweak them into an essay. That's like going into the produce section, grabbing the first five items displayed, chopping them up, and calling them a salad. When it's that easy, though, one should not expect much knowledge or wisdom building to come of the effort. Preparing an annotated bibliography requires a measure of focus, determination, and organization that will return a greater reward on the investment of time. It will more effectively introduce the researcher to ideas and discussions that have been in progress on a topic. The more accurate objective of an annotated bibliography is twofold. First, it allows you to make a quick survey to determine the availability of academic quality sources for your project. If you find there are not enough resources, you can switch topics immediately. Second, it assures that you have a collection of resources readily available for use in the preparation of subsequent tasks. We're going to take a quick look at three distinctive parts of preparing an annotated bibliography for this class. But before we do that, I want to touch on the research process. Focus on finding high quality sources. Use EBSCO host, ProQuest, and CQ Researcher. Login and password information is in the class bulletin board site under resources, research resources. An entry may describe an article, an interview, a book, a scholarly journal, or a primary document. An entry may describe a website source as long as the site is peer-reviewed. No Wikipedia entries can be used in the annotated bibliography, but you can use Wikipedia to locate scholarly articles that can be used. No short articles without an author can be used in the annotated bibliography, but you can use reports from credible agencies and organizations, even if they do not list an author. Tip, you can email articles to yourself from EBSCO, ProQuest, and CQ Researcher for offline reading. Tip, EBSCO and CQ Researcher have citation features which create citations in the proper format, though you may have to do a bit of editing. If you copy and paste the citations when you gather the sources, you will save a great deal of time. Skim sources as you go. As you are gathering sources, take a look at abstracts, cheaper headings, section headings, bold print, tables of content, introductions and conclusions, pull quotes, important ideas, and factual information. Read paragraphs and pages that seem most relevant. You don't need to read entire articles or books at this point. If a source seems interesting but may not be relevant, either reject it outright or just put a citation in your bibliography so you can relocate the source if you find you need it later. You can have many more than five citations, and you can also have more than five annotated entries in your annotated bibliography. The more complete you make this document, the more useful it will be as you work on other tasks. If a source looks like it will be useful, copy or email the file to yourself so you will have it for closer examination when you're offline. If a source looks valuable, you should follow the next two steps in the process. Format a citation and write an annotation. Hot tip, if you are unable to locate at least five useful, credible sources fairly quickly, you may need to consider changing your subject or getting in touch with me for some additional help. First, set up the document. Check out the MLA Manuscript Lecture. It goes into detail about how to set up a correctly formatted MLA document. The moment you locate a useful appearing source, prepare a citation. If you locate the source through EBSCO or CQ Researcher, 
use the citation feature and copy and paste into your bibliography. Be sure to check title capitalization and other details and correct any elements that don't conform to MLA style. If you locate a website that is peer-reviewed, such as National Institutes of Health, etc., you can use http colon forward slash forward slash easybib.com or http colon forward slash forward slash bibme.org to help you format citations. This is a real time saver, but all citation generators make mistakes, especially when it comes to capitalization of titles and placement of dates, so be sure to check all citations carefully. The citations for this assignment must be prepared in standard MLA style. The citation list should be in alphabetical order. If an article does not have an author listed, then the title of the article is the first element in the citation. If the title begins with A, an, or the, those words are ignored for the purpose of alphabetizing the list. Hanging indent. The citations use a hanging indent, which means the first line is at the standard margin but subsequent lines are indented. Hanging indents should be used only with the citations, not the entire document. URL or document ID. For this class, I must have an easy way to retrieve documents. This means I either need a document's URL or a document ID number if it comes from one of the subscription databases, such as EBS CO Host or CQ Researcher. An annotation is a note about a document. For this class, it should not only give a fair idea of what's in the document, a summary, but also some assessment of the document's value to the author. It should also contain one quote that might be considered for use in the essay. Be sure to put quote marks around it so you know to give it a signal phrase and proper citation if used. UNC has a good handout on choosing and using quotes. The annotation begins on the line right after the citation. It is indented to align with the innermost line of the citation. The easiest way to do that is set up the automatic hanging indent, press a return key after the citation, and then press the tab key once. That will begin the annotation in the correct position. Each annotation should be about 150 words. Skimpy annotations will not be useful nor will they garner much credit. At least five academic quality sources listed in the bibliography must have annotations, but you are free to add as many more as you like. Feel free to include many more citations than you annotate. As long as you're doing the research, you should gather info on sources that may be useful to you later.